Hello, uh, this is just a quick video to talk about a project that we have made. Um, so this is the RP engine, uh, obviously like a PC engine, but powered by a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and this comes from um, something I saw online. So I was searching for something PC engine related. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I ended up on the website of a company called PCE Works. If you don't know PCE Works, they do um, a bunch of... Um, Re-releases, I guess, is what is what we you call them. So they take a uh, existing old retro game and they re-release it on another format, not necessarily a modern format either. So, for instance, this is uh, Bonk's Adventure, which um, stop the sniggering, uh, which was originally a huge card, Hugh card, and they've released it on the uh, a Super CD. So this will still play on a PC engine, just on a CD instead. Um, what that generally means is you get uh, an awful lot of eBay and uh, Yahoo auction listings of rare games uh, for the PC Engine, which are actually just re-releases. Not their fault. That's um, what people decide to do with what they've done. Anyway, so we uh, whilst looking on their website, they also had the project they'd made, which uh, was effectively an all-in-one um, PC Engine and CD unit, uh, using what I assumed was um, was some kind of uh, uh, like ARM processor, especially built for it. That's why I assumed at the time. Uh, they weren't selling it anymore for whatever reason. I assumed the chip shortages had hit them, uh, which I think is probably true, but in a different way. Uh, and so I just mentioned on, on social media how it looked like a really, really good project. And I got some responses from people basically saying it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't great. It was just a, a Raspberry Pi in a box with a laptop CD-ROM. Uh, it was running RetroArch and it was all a bit fiddly and stuff. And it's like, well, okay, still a neat idea, um, but it, it apparently costs a lot of money as well, and there's no need for that, really. So I thought, can we just make a homebrew version of that, which everything could be freely available? Obviously, RetroArch is freely available, and all the 3D printed stuff could be made available, and then people could just chuck a Raspberry Pi in it and a laptop CD, which are easy enough to buy now because uh, all of the USB external ones use them and they come with a handy USB uh, adapter thing as well, which is what, uh, so that's what I recommend to get. Uh, and then you can just make your own. <laughs> so this whole comes about because RetroArt recently, well, I guess, um, how are well they called it? The LibRetro. They recently added in C limited CD-ROM support and PC Engine is one of the things that can use it, as can uh, the Sega CD and I think PlayStation One. I can't be. I'm not sure. Maybe others. But uh, so that's why this this has now happened. So you can just use RetroArch to do all the these native CD-ROM loading, which is kind of cool. I've also got an idea about making Hue cards load as well, but that's something I need to do in the future. So this is it. It's um yeah basically the the body of it is three different bits of 3D printed. It's very simple. Uh, the base, which obviously holds the Raspberry Pi, and also it's got a, a switch, It's got which turns on everything on. It's got a USB holder there, so you can plug a, an adapter in. That's the SD card for the Raspberry Pi, or the Raspberry Pi ports, although mostly you'll only be using the um, HDMI out. Uh, and that's a 9-volt uh, plug, which will... 5-volt plug, sorry. 5-volt, <laughs> which will power everything else. Um, the top part of the shell, which is this part here, holds just the CD-ROM. Uh, again, yeah, an external CD-ROM, which is really just a laptop thing with a clever little uh, uh, USB adapter in it. And this is a top plate, and this top plate is printed separately because it means you, it's much easier to print these bits flat with as little support as possible. But also it means if you, you might not necessarily want it to be an RP engine, you might want it to be a Mega RP or something, and so you can have, make your own plate, put that on there, and it can look like a Mega Drive, or a Mega CD, or a PlayStation, whatever, whatever machine you end up using. Um, very simple, but it does work, and we'll show it working now, and I think it's, uh, I, can't, I like it, I'm happy with what I did. <laughs> so... Let's shut this down and we will get it running and I will show some video of it actually running, captured, but also I'll show it on the TV as well so you can actually see it in play. Right, back in a bit. Okay, well now it's all set up and uh, I'll explain a little bit more about what we've done here. So we have a 5 volt power lead coming in the back here and what that does is it powers a small hub inside. I actually took a hub apart so that it would fit properly. Uh, all I did was take off the plastic casing in the end. I was playing to desolder everything but it was more hassle than it's worth and it fit anyway. So that hub is actually what's being used to both connect and power this CD-ROM because the Raspberry Pi itself 
hasn't got enough oomph to power it. Uh, and then this uh, USB socket here just basically has a USB connector going into the Raspberry Pi, which is where we plugged in our controller. Obviously, you can use Bluetooth controllers. This, in fact, is a Bluetooth controller. I just couldn't get it to, <laughs> to pair with the Raspberry Pi, so uh, it's you now it's being used as a USB controller. So, uh, But it, it should be fine. Um, this is just some cheap thing. Uh, imagine if you use something that's decent, it will work. Uh, so... Let's turn it on, which we do using this switch right here. All right, and there we go. We have uh, booted into Emulator Station. Uh, now, we can't use that because it just doesn't work. <laughs> there might be a way of getting it working, but I don't know what it is. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go to the RetroPie settings and then down to retro arch you will also when you first set this up have to go to the retro pi setup and just install all the modules for retro arch um, but there's more information about that in the document i'll include in the description anyway but if we go into this retro arch now obviously you can install retro arch on its own i assume i didn't get it to compile it just wouldn't compile and i couldn't work out why and there are obviously other um, distributions that use uh, the libretro stuff but none of those appear to have the low disk stuff which you see has popped up there as the fourth thing down now we can't actually go ahead and use that immediately because if we try to if we try to go to low disk now it will just tell us oh well, it tells us no disk is inserted but it would also when the disk is inserted tell us that there's uh, no core loaded so we have to go and load our core first so we know we're going to be using the PC engine, so we can load that core, and uh, I guess we may as well try Bonk's Adventure out, right? Since we just talked about it, um, I don't know if I've ever tried this disc. To be honest, I have multiple versions of Bonk's Adventure, and it's and um, PC Kid. So I've never, don't think I've ever used this disc before. Maybe, maybe I've tried it. I don't know, but we put that in. Right, it's spun up, so now we go to load disk, choose our CD drive, and then it should boot up. Right, okay, not quite. So uh, this is obviously, if you've, if you've used a CD on a PC before, this is the screen you get. You push the run button, which I think is that button. No, which is the run button. Oh, there's the run button, there we go. Now it should boot up. Hey, there we go. <laughs> There we are. I mean, brilliant. <laughs> um, not brilliant by me. All I did was create a, what was effectively a fancy um, Raspberry Pi case, but uh, brilliant by the people that did this. <laughs> um, it's a lovely bit of work. Anyway, we might as well try playing it for a bit. Um, that's the button start. <laughs> oh, this I'm not doing this. Oh, oh no, hadn't even started. That was a demo. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even sure what the buttons are on this thing. Oh, there we go. That's fine. That's fine. If you ever played Bonk's Adventure, by the way, it's, it's a really good game. It was effectively the mascot of the PC Engine, really. Um, and you know, it's a it's a tiny baby bar, um, cave boy headbutting things. What's not to like? Wee! I am pressing the wrong button like half the time. It is the buttons are in the right place. It's just my muscle memory is not great. Boop. <laughs> yeah, what's not to love, really? Oh, we should get some... I don't know, I thought we were going to get a... Uh... Right, one of these, I know, is a kind of a ghost thing. Yep, there is. Oh, bad guy. There we are. 
but we get that life back because it's just to show you what happens. Yeah, and it works, and it's um, obviously emulation for the, for the uh, PC Engine Stroke Turbo Graphics is um, vastly um, improved over the old days. So it's uh, yeah, you are basically getting the same experience. Boom, boom. Anyway, <laughs> that's enough of that. <laughs> Um, yeah, the project, uh, so the files will be available in the description below. Um, it's it's a fun little project. It's a fun little thing to get around. It's a neat little machine, if I say so myself. Um, a lot of the, I've blissed out my, the exact components that I've used, but also the source files in Autodesk Fusion are in the um, listing, so you can just modify it for bits you want to use instead. Uh, I think the CD thing will be more or less the same regardless although depending where the how much room you've got here for after the usb thing we try to keep it as small as possible so uh, as you can see it's barely bigger than the actual cd-rom drive itself but yeah it's a fun project and uh, one i definitely recommend to anyone thanks for watching <laughs>